Hello everyone, welcome back to the shed. Now as you can tell I may have told a small lie in my last video. It's not the Acura Scale Deltic. Now I didn't exactly expect these to turn up on my doorstep, but lo and behold the money got taken and these arrived just a few minutes ago. It's the new refurbished DBSOs by Backman. Uh, I knew they were due July uh, slash June, but uh, wasn't exactly expecting them this weekend. Now, as you can probably already see, I don't actually have the matching coaches on the layout to run these. That's because if you're buying a Backman Mark II, or any Backman coaches for that matter, I'd say you should probably expect what you're going to get. A really nice, smooth, quiet, possibly need a lubrication coach. Now, let's take a look at this one. This one's the Anglia version. This one's for Andy. He's got a nice rake of... Anglia Mark II's and an Anglia 86, so perfect for running with it. Sort of get it in focus. Can we do that? Yeah, look at that. There we go. Nice front end, and of course, it's the refurbished front end. So it hasn't got that weird corridor connector as you can see by the uh, sort of control sample I have on the layout already. That's the older version in the blue grey. Autofocus is really not playing ball, but yeah, that looks absolutely lovely. Nice sort of etched looking grill. Um, it is an etched grill. <laughs> it's not just etched looking, it is the real McCoy. Very nice undercoach detailing, of course, these are only available in um, DCC fitted, which I think is a weird choice by Backman, but um, I'm not going to complain. Um, I'm sure other people have their gripes. I know one of my friends does. That's why it's sort of because um, they're so much more when they're DCC fitted. Sort of put it off, put him off of um, getting one of these. Just notice that says does not say guard. It says senior conductor on the door. Same on the other side, and you've got, of course, door for the driver. Well, that's very nice. So it's a nice first go. Never really thought about the Anglia livery myself, but there we are. Now of course I'm going to test these and the lighting functions, so you are going to get a little bit of close up with the coach. And uh, that's the instruction manual, but it's going to be the same for the network rail one I imagine, so there's no need to have two of them out at the same time. So I ordered these a while ago, I think I, I ordered them as soon as they were first announced, which was earlier this year. I ordered them from Kerno as soon as possible. It seems that this version, the Network Rail one, has been sold out on pre-order in a number of places. I know people have obviously made their own sort of kit-bashed versions or something. So, bit, of, bit of card in there, it's weird. Probably an off-cut from the factory. Extra content? Wow, you're so generous, Backman. Anyway, yes, the Network Rail ones have been very popular because these are what Network Rail primarily use on their test trains when they're not top and tailing. Let's pop that over there and get the box out of the way so we have a nice close look. I was very excited when they announced it and I'm keeping my hopes up because of course this coming weekend is the practically perfect sale. At GCR so I'm hoping that that new collectors club item they're going to reveal uh, is in fact a DRS version of the DBS so I will definitely buy one of those but of course it means I have to get a 37-4 it's an excuse to get a compass liveried one I suppose um, so anyway I digress let's look at the coach more etched grill etched grill this time is still Ooh, still um, yellow though, not black, so it's painted to match the bodywork. Very smart, got the logo on there, blanked off window. And I must say the corridor end is also nice and fancy, you've got these draped off cables as well. Looks very nice. Uh, is that legible? Oh, barely, I'd need a magnifying glass to see what's on the uh, guard's door there. Uh, no marking for the driver. Bit odd, but of course this doesn't usually stop at stations, so you don't need that designation really. Uh, oh, 
Ah. Well, that's interesting. That's not off my finger. That's a factory paint issue. Now, isn't that interesting? That looks like a fingerprint smudge of some kind. How strange. Now, I do have some network rail body side yellow where I could touch that up. I'm not too concerned about returning this. And besides, even weathering could probably cover that up. Is it terribly noticeable? Well, yes, it is actually, but uh, huh, it's a bit of a shame. Oh well. Fortunately, I have the means to fix that, but if I was a general consumer, yeah, I would be sending that back. See if there's any issues with the Anglia one. Hmm, not like I can see. Interesting. Well, the most hotly anticipated one has got an issue. Anyway, let's pop this on the track real quick. Probably should have done it the other way around so we actually see where the wheels are. Lovely and smooth that. Yep, lovely and smooth. Okay, so let's get a close up and see what the differences are between our control sample, of course, the older non-referred version and the new version. So I'd say the main difference, of course, is that um, refurbed front end, removing the corridor and adding these little sides to the uh, windscreen. Plus you've also got this extra part on the roof. I believe that's a radio part. I'm willing to be corrected on that. And an extra little vent there. By the looks. And the end's just as detailed. This end of the Anglia and the Intercity one do match up, but if we look over at the Network Rail one, these uh, cables are actually unique to it by the looks. So they've actually even put in that detail. Of course, we've got the interlocking lights. Um, on these two, it's not on the DBSO by the looks of it. That's interesting. Okay, so that's an even further improvement. That's nice to see. Of course, we've got this blanked off window compared to that version just seating in there it's the guards compartment of course the driver's area not really sure if there's actually too much detail in there but yep they're very smart so let's pop back on the tripod and we'll go through the DCC functions so I've got my trusty NCE power cab and I have a book of instructions. Let's have a look at them and see what we've got. This is owner's information, some various extra detailing to be putting on, including that front plow. Some extra detailing to put at the other end, the non-driving end. And how to attach that coupling. Okay, that's just detailing information in that bit. And this will be the DCC. So, yep, of course, relatively limited functions, but of course it allows you to control that lighting with ease. So let's have a look. We've got directional. Yeah, look at that. Lovely. Works. Now, of course, I'm not controlling these at the same time because they're both defaulted to three at the moment. I will put an address um, on them individually eventually. Such big words. Um... But for now, just for sake of testing and showing you the functions, I'm just going to do them individually. So, that was directional lighting, so that's function zero. No function on one. There are, yep, there we go, cab lighting. So, before we go any further, let's zoom in on the network rail one. It's 
grab the thing. So there you can see the headlight coming on and off. And if we go directional, yep, lovely tail lights. Great stuff. So function two is the cab lights. There you go, you can see that coming on and off. Uh, next is a guards compartment light. So let's move the camera along a bit more. Function three. Yep, look at that, lovely. Nice and lit up. And then I take it we're gonna to have to move along even further. Yep, function four, interior lighting. Lovely, look at that. And then moving up even further and give it a bit of zoom. And we're gonna be, yep, look at that. And that's function five and six for the de uh, door interlocking lights. Dear, honestly. Uh, and they're controlled uh, individually to each side. So that's a nice little feature as well. Right, so that's the whole lot on the network rail one. So let's scoot that back. And zoom out. And have a look at the Anglia one. So if we leave it sort of about there. So we want to isolate this road and unisolate that one. Lovely, there's the headlight and the tail lights. Great stuff. Then no function on one. Cab light on two. Yep, nice little bit of cab light. Function three, guards compartment light. Yep. Function four being the interior lighting. We'll move it up this way. And a little bit of zoom so we can see that interlocking light in a moment. Function four, yeah, lovely interior lighting, great stuff. Five and six, yeah, nice bit of interlocking light. So, as much as it is to cut a review short, because it's a coach, there aren't any sound functions. Although I'm sure maybe that's something we could look at in the future, but you've usually got door slamming included on loco sounds. Um, deliveries are really nice. Uh, the only letdown is that small like finger smudge from the factory. I'm sure I can touch that up myself or maybe I'll just get my whole test train rake weathered. Um, to be honest when I've been working line side and these have come past and they usually come past when we're north of Peterborough and um, they're not usually clean, the locos aren't particularly uh, immaculate. Um, so yeah, maybe a bit of light weathering can politely cover that up, or we'll just sort of call, it, call that like a... Oh, it's an oil smudge. The, the, the person at Derby accidentally went like that when they had oil on their hands, and it's, it's on the thing. Um, I'm not too concerned with returning it. I'm sure that's going to peeve completely others, and there might be a comment or two saying, Return it, return it, you shouldn't be allowing that. Um, I'm such an impartial guy, I don't care, that can be covered up. Um, I know there are many others who don't want to dabble in trying to fix things yourself, um, but honestly, I don't really care, no. Uh, the Anglia one is really nice, it's been a missing link in the whole Anglia livery for a while. Of course Hornby, um, Andy has his own, as I mentioned earlier, 86 and Mark II, so having this means you can have a proper train. I think the only thing, I don't know if anyone's made one, the buffets on the Anglia trains were Mark 3s. So that's the only other standout thing. If that's a thing, I'll get it custom done. We've basically got a full train now. So this is a really nice missing link to fill in from what we already had going on with the first lot of unrefurbished DBSOs. Um, I think they look really smart. Of course, I know them way more in this livery than I have in the others because I'm so bloody young. Um, I think the way they've done, or just how they've done it is great. Um, the individual detailings as well, such as the blanked off window and the cables at the back of the network rail one is really nice. Um, I'm glad they've put in these attention to details because it really just sort of adds to the whole thing. Uh, I'm sure back would have made a killing off the network rail one. I'm sure plenty of people are happy to see the Anglia one. That'll fill a gap in the nice timeline. Uh, of course, the only one I haven't got out of this or there are two versions of the DBSO I have not got, and I don't think we'll probably ever get. It's the ScotRail version, uh, which is the original unrefurbished lot, and the Intercity Swallow version. 
I'm not particularly big myself on Intercity Swallow. The actual only thing I have is what you saw in the last video, the APTE, which never ran in that livery. Anyway, um, so yeah, this fills out our fleet really nicely. We do like our blue grey. We do, of course, have an Anglia rake, and of course, I do like my test trains. Um, another one of those little oddballs that I do quite like. Um, is there any more I can really say? Um, now that I've just taken a closer look, that footstep right there has got some black smudging on it. Um, but I mean, that's fair enough. I mean, it's going to, you know, when it's in Derby, people use tread plates. Again, that's another thing that could be covered up with a bit of weathering. That is really the only downside right there, that little smudge. Um, but even from a distance, I can barely see that's there. You really have to look for these things. Uh, so, that's another thing, even though it's, you know, for some reason people think it's a staple nowadays. Oh, thank you, Backman, thank you. Wonderfully, there are no sprung buffers. I Nowadays, I absolutely detest sprung buffers. Then It's nice to know they're there, but they serve no real function. Um, I don't know why that became a standard. It's like Hornby and their opening doors on the HSTs in the 50s. There was no real need for it. It was a nice niche at the time. Um, the amount of lighting functions that are there are really nice. I can't wait to see a DRS version of this. Fingers crossed. Collector's Club. Uh, because that's also another little missing link and another one of the main liveries we've seen in modern times of course Anglia finished up with these they moved to the 90s or I think it was one at the time one took over the branding that's another livery we haven't seen on this maybe in the future one livery they moved to 90s and DVTs and mark threes so of course these got displaced the main places I've ever seen are DBSOR network rail test trains and DRS on the Cambrian uh, and I did once see one used as a surrogate um, brake standard open on the wherry lines I've got a photo of that somewhere um, yeah it fills a really nice gap I'm glad that they've done it I have no complaints with these um, of course apart from that little smudge um, so I think we should call the video there uh, if you do have any questions about these, do um, leave a comment. Um, I'd really appreciate it if maybe you shared this with your friends if you're thinking about getting one of these. Um, they're plenty quiet, they're really smooth rolling. I would recommend getting one, but of course do watch out for stuff like that paint smudge uh, on the Network Rail one. So, thank you all for watching, and now, fingers crossed, hopefully the next video will be on the Acura Scale Deltic once it's arrived on my doorstep. Thank you very much for watching, and until next video, goodbye.